Big news for shooter fans! Our friends over at RetroBit Publishing just announced that they'll be bringing the classic 1993 shoot 'em up Eliminate down to North America and Europe for the very first time. This is a big deal, because this is one of those hidden gems that's been going for hundreds of dollars at import shops, so it's great to finally be able to get a Genesis cartridge at an affordable price. And let me tell you, this game rocks. I've been playing a lot of it in the lead up to this announcement, and it's so much fun. I can't wait to get my copy, and you can get one of your very own because the pre-order window is going on right now and will last until early January. Now, with all this excitement surrounding Eliminate Down, I wondered what Electronic Gaming Monthly thought of this era of shoot-'em-ups. What was their favorite 16-bit shooter? As it turns out, EGM reviewed a total of 61 shooters between 1989 and 1995. That includes the heyday of the early arcade ports all the way through the genre trying to find its place in an ever-changing industry. In order to compile this list, I've decided to focus solely on the traditional vertical and horizontal shooters of that era. Skip in all of the offshoots, like the run-and-gun shooters, the 3D shooters, and so on and so forth. So for this list, don't expect to see classic action games like Contra, or Smash TV, or even Star Fox. We're going to keep it simple and straightforward, and let me tell you, there's more than enough to make a great list here. What we're going to do is count down the top 61 shoot 'em ups using Electronic Gaming Monthly's own words and scores. There's no editorializing here, we're just going to focus on what the critics said back when these games first came out. So get ready to save the universe all by yourself, because we're taking that experimental fighter jet straight into the heart of Electronic Gaming Monthly's top 61 shoot 'em ups of the 16-bit era. What's the hottest 16-bit video game system with true arcade games, great graphics, real challenge, stereo sound, and the hottest library too with games like Altered Beast? Golden Axe, Super Hang-On, Forgotten Worlds, Space Harrier 2, Revenge of Shinobi, Tommy Assorta Baseball, Buxton, Last Battle, Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf, Super Thunder Blade, Zoom, Thunder Force 2, Ghouls and Ghosts, Mystic Defender, Rambo 3, and more, Genesis from Sega. Genesis, the new generation in video games. Kicking things off at number 61, it's Deep Blue on the TurboGrafx-16. Shooting fish in the ocean? That doesn't sound too exciting, and it isn't. Probably the most frustrating game ever, with enemy fish hitting you from off screen before you can even react. It doesn't hold your interest and doesn't have nearly enough variety. Number 60, Terraforming on the TurboGrafx-16. Terraforming is TTI's latest release? Come on, guys! This game is completely dull and boring. Shooters are known for their wild power-ups, and while they're nothing spectacular, there are a lot of them making you nearly invulnerable at times. The music is a joke. Many of the tunes don't even match the levels they're for. This could have been a good game two years ago, but the duo is dying quickly. Number 59, or Dine, on the TurboGrafx-16. This game doesn't appeal to me at all. The graphics don't fit the game, the power-ups are too uneven, and there's not enough challenge to keep anyone but the youngest players interested. Shooter fans will be disappointed with this seven-round game that's sure to be finished in the same day. Number 58, Battle Squadron on the Genesis. Great multi-level scrolling backgrounds or two-player action. Ugh, it's a tough choice Electronic Arts had to make, but I would have rather had great backgrounds. The game looks like something that was done on the 8-bit. When stacked up against the competition, this is only average. Number 57, Super Air Zonk on the TurboGrafx-16. What's with all these shooters on the Turbo Duo? Super Air Zonk might have been better if there was much more to it. The power-ups are pretty tame and the action never gets strong enough. However, the music is good and actually matches the levels that it's played in. Another plus is that there are bits of comedy here and there, similar to Parodius. This one is okay, but really needed more. Number 56, Biohazard Battle on the Genesis. Thunder Force 4, it ain't. While Sega's first attempt at a shooter in a long time is a valiant effort, 
the cart just doesn't hang in there as far as challenge and longevity. Shooter fans will want to grab onto this one, but the average player will do best to try it out first. Good graphics and a better than average amount of weapons and pluses. Number 55, Vapor Trail on the Genesis. From start to finish, Vapor Trail is an average shooter. The game's 1 plus, a two player simultaneous option, is welcome, but it only really succeeds in making the card easier. The game suffers from slowdown, flicker, and weaponry that has been seen many times before. Number 54, Strike Gunner STG on the Super Nintendo. This game has a cool intro, but the game doesn't hold up very well. Besides being incredibly easy, with never more than a handful of enemy intruders on screen at any one time, the backgrounds lack any real detail. The gameplay is further weakened by poor weapon progression and bad execution. Not for me. Number 53, Super Thunder Blade on the Genesis. Super Thunder Blade just isn't what a 16-bit game should be. It's not offending, but the graphics, while detailed, don't move in smooth progression from the background to the foreground. The worst thing about Super Thunder Blade, however, is how it controls with poor response that is slow and sluggish and makes the game tedious. Number 52, Bio Metal on the Super Nintendo. All the elements of an average shooter are here, huge bosses, tons of power-ups and weapons, and great graphics. Unfortunately, the perky techno-pop music by Pop Group 2 Unlimited just doesn't belong unless you can dance your feet and play the game simultaneously. Number 51, Viewpoint on the Genesis. American Sammy has done a good job at converting this Neo Geo shooter. However, there's some bad slowdown and the music comes nowhere near the original. Shooter fans, however, will like it. Number 50, Lords of Thunder on the Sega CD. When this came out for the Turbo Duo, it was a truly rockin' game. Now it just seems like Sega is trying to catch some of that success. The game looks and feels like the Duo version, which is good, but when comparing this game and the other shooters that have come out recently, Lords of Thunder just doesn't stand up to the competition. Yeah, it's decent, but it isn't too spectacular. It's standard fair stuff. Number 49, Android Assault on the Sega CD. A side-scrolling shooter with a killer rock music soundtrack. Like others in the genre, there are several power-ups and weapons to collect. The only problem was the graphics. They're average, considering this is a CD. Number 48, Supernova on the Super Nintendo. There are some excellent elements here, like great weapons and at times astonishing graphics. But the one-hit wonder aspect that sends you back away in each level when hit is very aggravating. Number 47, Arrow Flash on the Genesis. Not a bad shooter, but not a spectacular one either. Arrow Flash comes out a bit better than average, with minuses for power-ups, just not enough, but big pluses for backgrounds. The Jupiter effect on one level is good, and the wave level is hypnotizing. It should have been made harder. Number 46, Whip Rush on the Genesis. Whip Rush comes close, but in the end, it simply misses the mark. The main ship controls in an awkward fashion and makes it difficult to fight in two directions. The game is all about the expected bosses and backgrounds, but they just don't have the crisp edge. This. It's not a toy. It's a sophisticated multimedia video entertainment system that uses the latest CD technology, not rated for little boys. With CD capabilities prepared for assault, sight, and sound. It's upwardly and downwardly compatible with games and graphics that make others look like mere child's play. Step into the next dimension and get the new Turbo Duo. It's not a toy. Now get five free games, including Game of Thunder, when you buy the new Turbo Duo. Sold at stores near you. And we're back with number 45, Super Earth Defense Force on the Super Nintendo. I'm a real fan of side-scrolling shooters, but there are substantial problems with the execution of Super Earth Defense Force. First of all, the game offers little in the way of variety within each round. 
The backgrounds and enemies, which are extremely small, are repetitive. The weapon power-ups are unique, but overall, I wasn't impressed. Number 44, Truxton on the Genesis. Truxton is a fast-paced shooter that has spectacular graphics and incredible visual power-ups. These features, combined with the huge bosses and stellar backgrounds, make this the best shooter I've played since Blazing Lasers. More levels would have made it even better. Number 43, Blazon on the Super Nintendo. Why would a company release a mediocre shooter when other carts show just how good a Super NES shooter can really be? The game is fairly difficult, but the graphics are nothing to shout about. The sound department isn't the best either. The gameplay is very straightforward, with only a few cool options. Missed it by... Ugh. Number 42, Galaga 90 on the TurboGrafx-16. A 1990 version of Space Invaders. While nicely done on the Turbo, it still boils down to a basic shooter. 12 years of progress does add fireworks, but if there's a reason to get this game, it has to be the sound. One of the best, with choreographed aliens that are comical. Just average. Number 41, Soldier Blade on the TurboGrafx-16. It seems like deja vu, but is TurboGrafx cloning its previous shooters? The game suffers a bit from a lack of power-ups and different levels of power. The gameplay is good, as are the graphics and sound, but it could have used a bit of spicing up. Yet its overall action and quality remain above average. Number 40, Grindstormer on the Genesis. It's too bad this game didn't come out a few years back. This is the type of shooter that would have won Shooter of the Year, but the problem is that there are just too many weapons that we've all seen already, like the Wide Weapon Attack and Homing Weapon. Yes, they're cool and powerful weapons to have, but they're not anywhere near original. Aside from that, it's a good shooter that can stand on its own merit. Number 39, Dragon Spirit on the TurboGrafx-16. Now this is closer to what a 1990 shooter should be. Plenty of different types of firepower, power-ups, and a wide variety of enemies. It scrolls nicely and handles well. Dragon Spirit has a proper difficulty curve and offers constant non-stop action. The graphics aren't state-of-the-art, but it fits the turbo. Number 38, Magical Chase on the TurboGrafx-16. Magical Chase could have just as easily been called Lords of Thunder Super Deformed. It plays extremely well for a cartoony game, and the enemies are, at times, very funny. This is the Parodius of the Thunder series, and will entertain kids of all ages. Any devoted Lords of Thunder fans will probably want to get this game. Number 37, CyberCore on the TurboGrafx-16. This game is very good, once again showcasing the Turbo's ability to produce visually stunning games that play good, too. The action is a bit repetitive here, with not as much diversity as Blazing Lasers. But shooter fans should be happy. Number 36, Subterrania on the Genesis. Now here's a game with originality. Subterrania offers tons of strategy, but not without some agonizing features. The constant gravity keeps pulling you down. While this is a major part of the game, it will take a little time to get used to it. Other than that, the control is great, the music has a soothing beat, and the missions can get really rough. It's refreshing to see programmers come up with new ideas these days. Number 35, Wings of War on the Genesis. Another blaster for the Genesis that unfortunately doesn't boast a great theme or unique enhanced scales. Wings of War is solid action, don't get me wrong. But if you're looking for anything other than a shooting blowout, then Wings will probably not excite. Number 34, Superstar Soldier on the TurboGrafx-16. If you ask me, it's the sequel to Blazing Lasers, a very conventional but good shooter for the Turbo. While the game is harder than Blazing Lasers, it lacks the variety and weapons and power-ups that made Blazing so good. Great graphics and exceptional music blended with great gameplay. Number 33, Dead Moon on the TurboGrafx-16. This is a shooter that is long overdue. The game resembles a side-scrolling blazing lasers with less power-ups. The graphics are stunning and the music is extremely well done for a card. 
The gameplay is great and provides solid shooting action from start to finish. That's sad, the card is too short and there's not enough weapons. Number 32, Robo Aleste on the Sega CD. I was expecting a total kick-butt Musha on steroids game from these folks and, sad to say, I'm disappointed. The game is very good, but there's nothing more than CD music to set this game apart from the cartridge shooters. The power-ups are cool, but the bosses are unoriginal, and at times the game is very unfair. Number 31, Curse on the Genesis. An excellent shooter that almost didn't make it to these shores, Curse is an exceptional side-scrolling shooter with vivid graphics and a large variety of enemy characters. The game is too short, however, and most will complete it with little difficulty. Now testing blazing lasers for the new TurboGrafx-16 video game system. Subject exposed to non-stop blazing laser fire, eight power-up weapons, nine levels of hostile aliens. Objective, defeat the Dark Squadron. Save Earth. Test completed. Blazing Lasers, one of many great games for TurboGrafx-16 from NEC, the higher energy video game system. And we're back with number 30, Air Zonk on the TurboGrafx-16. Zonk, Bonk, whatever. DTI has taken the old caveman and updated him for the 90s. They did a good job also, especially by not relying on the old character to carry the game. The new Zong has personality of his own, and this is probably the best way to break away from the Bonk series. One of the best Turbo games. Number 29, Raiden Trad on the Genesis. An excellent vertically scrolling shooter. It isn't revolutionary as it utilizes older tried and true gameplay. But what makes this great is the fact that it does everything perfectly. Challenging gameplay, a good difficulty curve, and graphics that are among the best on the Genesis. Number 28, Right and Trad on the TurboGrafx-16. One of the most intense arcade games ever made is now one of the most intense turbo shooters. Same cool weapons, same vicious end bosses, and the same non-stop action that made the coin op so good. The graphics are good, but the sound leaves a little to be desired. Number 27, Twin Cobra on the Genesis. A great shooter that is a classic favorite to me as well as most veteran gamers. This game is a carbon copy of the arcade. Great graphics and sound and superb gameplay make this one of the best shooters around. Definitely not for the wimpy shooter fans. Number 26, Sagaya on the Genesis. Another 8 meg monster to buy for the memory muncher. The most impressive thing about this game is not its amazing graphics, and they are amazing, but the fact that it has a total of 28 different levels. Awesome bosses and cool power-ups. Eh, the sounds could have used some improving, though. Number 25, Firepower 2000 on the Super Nintendo. If you look at this game from two sides as Jeep Battle and Heli Battle, you get two different scores. The Jeep action is awkward and difficult to control, but the overhead helicopter mode dishes up some of the best vertical scroll action the Super NES has ever seen. Not a lot of Mode 7 flash, just solid, solid gameplay. Number 24, Sylphide on the Sega CD. Sylphide has some of the most stunning visuals in a video game. The cinemas are unbelievable. The game itself is rather mundane. It's a simple shooter that seems to lack any real interaction with the amazing backgrounds. The gameplay is solid, however, and there's absolutely no slowdown whatsoever. I only wish there had been more interaction. If you liked the classic arcade shooters, you'll love this one. They're very similar. Number 23, Thunder Force 2 on the Genesis. You haven't seen great graphics until you've seen Thunder Force 2. Easily the best visuals in a shoot 'em up, and with horizontal and vertical fighting sequences, this game has more than enough variety. The action is intense and non stop. Just another example of how much better a 16 bit cart can be. 
Number 22, Blazing Lasers on the TurboGrafx-16. Definitely the best space shooter available on any system. A multitude of power-ups can be enhanced to incredible levels with stunning backgrounds and enemies providing plenty of targets. Everything in this game, from the bosses to the music to the play, is near perfect. Number 21, Soul Dees on the Genesis. Soul Dees has it all. From great graphics to fast-moving action to a wide variety of weapon enhancements, this is every Blaster fan's dream come true. While you will notice some flicker, the gameplay gives you an alien armada to go up against. From the smallest enemy to the largest boss, this game is a winner. Number 20, Hellfire on the Genesis. In many respects, Hellfire is as good as Gyrus, but this soft is even harder. Too hard for my taste, but there are players that thrive on that. Great scrolling, plenty of fast action, and good audio. Lose your power, and you might as well restart the game. Too hard. Number 19, Insector X on the Genesis. Insector X is out to bug Genesis players with great graphics, lots of shooting, and a twist on the conventional shooter theme. Grab your fly swatter and check this card out, especially if you're a shooter fan. Number 18, Ranger X on the Genesis. Ranger X is incredible. It puts the many other action titles like this to shame, and then some. The difficulty is high, but it's welcome in this day of way too easy games. The colors are simply brilliant as well. The control can seem a little quirky at first, however. The incredible variety of weapons, the non-stop action, and the doses of strategy are pretty much unequaled by anything else. Number 17, UN Squadron on the Super Nintendo. A shooter for the Super Nintendo that isn't plagued by the annoying slowdowns found in Super R-Type and Gradius 3? Spectacular graphics and sound, as well as a huge arsenal of weapons, make this the most impressive shooter available yet. I just wish it was a little more intense. Number 16, Choplifter 3 Rescue Survive on the Super Nintendo. Yes, Choplifter, the timeless game finally makes it to the Super NES, and it's a winner! Fans of military simulations will definitely feel at home with this one. The levels are huge, but there could have been more of them. And we're back with number 15, KO Flying Squadron on the Sega CD. A cutesy shooter with the standard requirement for the genre, huge bosses and power-ups. This one adds excellent cinemas and sound effects. This must be one of the best shooters to appear on the Sega CD. Number 14, Forgotten Worlds on the Genesis. Forgotten Worlds is another pixel-perfect arcade translation from Sega. Although the movement of your character in this two-player combo title is awkward at first, the superb graphics, detailed attackers, and hard-hitting gameplay make this one a winner. Number 13, Psychosis on the TurboGrafx-16. One of the most bizarre shooters I've ever played. Backgrounds are made up of optical illusions that'll trick you, attack you, and drive you nuts. I love it! Tough from beginning to end. Psychosis is one shooter that makes others look too normal to be interesting. Too short. I need more. Number 12, Gradius 2 on the Super Nintendo. My favorite series of shooters has finally gone 16-bit. The graphics are truly an upgrade to the NES version, and the music is very cool. Tons of cool new weapons to use. The game lacks the intensity and only picks up in the later rounds. A good shooter, but not the best. Number 11, Super R-Type on the Super Nintendo. Super R-Type is a hodgepodge of the very best from both of the arcade games with a large cup of new material thrown in for good measure. It's vintage R-Type with incredible graphics, sharp weaponry, and awesome enemies. It's too easy and too short, but the trip is spectacular. Number 10, R-Type 3 The Third Lightning on the Super Nintendo. This is definitely one game that you won't master in one sitting. 
fans of the earlier installments of the R-Type saga will want to check this one out. Huge levels, excellent bosses, and rather high difficulty make this the shooter to get. The two-player is a nice option, and thank goodness for the Unlimited continues. Nice purchase, Jalico. Number 9, Philios on the Genesis. Great, colorful graphics that'll knock you out of your chair. Dazzling, multi-moving graphic imagery and theme music. A shooter, yes, but what a shooter this is. A mythological storyline with R-Type overtones? Exceptional. Number 8, Fire Shark on the Genesis. Once again, the Genesis proves that it can do just about anything that you can find in the arcade. Fire Shark is challenging and fun to play with progressive weapons and bonus points that add strategy to the mayhem. Number 7, Thunder Force 3 on the Genesis. Thunder Force 3 is as close to the perfect shooter as you can get. Eight explosive levels of blast em away action highlight this card that is definitely in a class by itself. The graphics, sound, music, full-screen bosses, and intense firepower all conspire to make this an incredible game. Number 6, Arrow Blasters on the TurboGrafx-16. You can't ask for much more in a shooter. The graphics are great, the gameplay is intense, and it moves lightning fast. The scrolling is great, and the music is intense. This is the kind of shooter that you wouldn't expect on the Turbo, but they came through this time. Great game. Number 5, Gate of Thunder on the TurboGrafx-16. Gate of Thunder is without a doubt one of the best shooters I've played in a long time. The graphics are phenomenal, every end boss is huge and awesomely detailed. Incredible music and tons of cool cinemas also enhance this disc. The best thing is the near-perfect gameplay. Its only vice is the ease of play. Number 4, Lords of Thunder on the TurboGrafx-16. Killer tunes, sharp graphics, tight gameplay, you want it, you got it. Lords of Thunder literally rocks you to your knees with its pounding bass and guitar rhythm. I've never heard such jamming music in a high quality game until now. If you own a Turbo Duo, you must pick up Lords of Thunder. Number 3, Axley on the Super Nintendo. Axley takes shooters to new heights with its play mechanics and spectacular graphics melded into a single interstellar blast-a-thon. The game utilizes a wide variety of Super NES special features and provides a wild array of weapons in both the pseudo-first-person and side-scrolling perspectives. Absolutely incredible! Number 2, Space Megaforce on the Super Nintendo. Absolutely incredible! This is, without a doubt, my favorite Super NES shooter. The graphics are phenomenal and the Mode 7 effects are so good they'll make you nauseous. Awesome power-ups and near-perfect gameplay make this a blast from beginning to end. Multiple difficulty settings and 12 hyper-intense levels. Joy! And finally, at number 1, Gyrus on the Genesis. Thunder Force 3, move over! Once I started playing this game, I couldn't put it down. Few words can describe this shooter. Innovative power-ups, rockin' tunes, crisp graphics, the best end bosses ever! If ever there was a game to follow and nearly surpass Thunder Force 3, this is it. How fast do you have to be to play the new Super R-Type for Super NES? This fast. Super R-Type from Irem for Super NES. See how good you really are. Super R-Type for Nintendo is hot, but you can't always stick around the house because... Jimmy, get down here! In emergencies, you gotta travel light. Super R-Type for Nintendo Game Boy. See how good you really are. Hey, thanks for watching me counting down these classic shooters. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new episodes just like this almost every week. We have a whole playlist with franchises as diverse as Mario, Sonic, Final Fantasy, Tomb Raider, Burnout, Road Rash, Twisted Metal, Street Fighter, Castlevania, Resident Evil, and more. So many more. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite 16-bit shoot-'em-up? Is it one of the ones on this list, or is it something that EGM didn't even get to? Let me see your picks in the comments below.
In other news, we'll be back later this week with a review of Prison City and Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion Remastered. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.